Hello and welcome to video number three in my series for my Tunisian crochet shawl, Lhasa, which is this beauty here. Of course, made out of Fibre Spades Gleam Lace and you'll find a link to the pattern itself and to the yarn um, in the description below here, along with some other details that might, you might find useful. So what I'm going to do here in this video before we get into the complexity of row one of chart A is just to go through the key with you so you know what you're looking at. So these little white squares here are quite basically what we did on our foundation row. We did 21 of them already. Each one of them results in a little line like so on your fabric. So that's just a series of white squares um, personified in your, in your stitching there. So to do those uh, from the foundation row onwards, you're basically doing the same thing, but instead of going into the chain, you're going to go through the line itself, yarn over and draw a loop through. So that's one white square complete. If I was to do a second one, I'd do the next rung along, yarn over and draw through. Traditional holders, by the way, if you do hold your yarn with your left hand, totally fine, totally doable. Sliding through the next line along, yarn over the way you are accustomed to and draw through like so. I just, I'm just more comfortable doing it this way. So that's the way I do it. So I don't make a mess up so much on videos. So there you go. There's a fourth one and there's a fifth one there on that. So that would be five white squares in a row. And I know you're looking at it going, hey, no, the six though, but that was there already. That's just there. It's your little blipping cursor at the start of a word processing document or something like that. That's just there, but it doesn't count. These are the five here that count. That's, they're the actions I took to create those. So that's my Tunisian simple stitch completed there, if I did five of them. This next symbol along here is two white or two gray shapes, whatever shape they are. They could be di triangles, they could be squares. But if you have two in a row like so, it means you're looking to decrease. And this is the symbol that you're likely to see in a pattern. Tunisian simple stitch two together. Two together is familiar if you're already a crocheter. In this case, you're not using a single crochet or a double crochet. You're using a Tunisian crochet stitch. So in this case, we are going to be doing similar to what we used these for here. But instead of just going through one, you're going to go through two. Yarn over and then draw that yarn over back through both of those loops like so. So essentially you have taken two and you've turned them into one. You can see the little fork in the road there. You can see a little Y, backwards Y shape. Those have become that, like so. Simple enough. If you happen to have three in a row, same rule applies, same logic, except we are going to put three together. So if I'm looking at this, I'm going to go through one, two, three, yarn over, and you pull that yarn over back through all three of those. And you end up with this lovely little crow's foot shape. You can see the three little lines there culminating in the one I have on my hook here. So that's our three together. Now our next one down is this little black triangle here. It's usually always a triangle in these, uh, these patterns and that's a yarn over. Simple reason for that is that it gives you a loop on your hook without attaching it to the fabric that comes before which when we get to other stitches on the other side essentially gives us an eyelet. It gives us a bridge on our hook that gives us a hole in our fabric, which will result miraculously in all these lovely holes here and later on to these ones as well. So that's our yarn over in place. Now I'm going to do a simple stitch on the other side of that just to illustrate how that looks for you. Do two of them actually, better off further from the cliff edge. There we go. All right, so there we go. We have your two simple stitches and your yarn over previous to it. And you can see that there is definitely a hole in the fabric underneath that yarn over, but we will end up with a stitch of sorts on our next row of Tunisian crochet fabric. So you're not losing out by creating that. You're actually adding a loop to it. The last working symbol that I'm going to be showing you here is a Tunisian knit stitch. Now this is a different type of stitch and we only use it very rarely in the pattern itself, but it's very good for keeping you centered in the chart and it does add a nice little texture to what you're doing. So Tunisian knit stitch is very, very clever. All you have to do is start off doing a Tunisian simple stitch. So pop your hook through like so, but rather than dragging your way the whole way through, what we're going to do instead is just nuzzle in and then pop through the back. There's a, a natural gap there just to the side. If you're right-handed, you'll find the gap just to the left. If you're left-handed, you're going the opposite direction. You'll find it just to the right. So we go in 
and pop straight through to the back of your work like so. Then we do our yarn over and that yarn over is drawn back through all the fabric that you went through so you're entirely at the front again. Now the effect isn't in exactly visible on the first go but after a few rows if you do them on top of each other you really really start to see the fact that in the fabric itself you end up with a lovely little knit stitch symbol and you can kind of see them along here that's what you end up with something that's a v rather than just a line like its friends on either side so the knit stitch gives you a nice little spine of the center of your work like so the last symbol on this here is your stitch counting guide in this case, I put the number five in. The idea behind this is simply so that you're not cross-eyed when you're trying to look at the chart itself. You can see here on this, I have a number six and I have six white squares in a row. It's just, I find with my dyslexia, it's hard to focus on all the white squares and how many there are. So if I have a number handy, just to give me an idea of what the span is, that makes the chart a little easier to read, I find. So there we go, you've got your six and they last that long. Um, and that's all the symbols. That's all the symbols you're going to need. So on the next video, since I've chatted on so much, I will get to the actual chart row one, chart A row one, and I hope you join me for that as well. Thanks a million for watching.